Welcome. In this video, we will learn how we can install ViperOS. Head on over to gitlab.com slash magnacore slash ViperOS. I will give the link in the description below. Then go to releases. And from here, you can download the torrent. Alternatively, you can go to fasttorrents.com slash distribution slash ViperOS. Scroll down. Click on jump to torrents and you can get the magnet link or the torrent from here. Once you download the torrent, it's a good idea to verify the checksum. So let's do that. Go to the folder where you downloaded the torrent. And if you're on Linux, you can use the command SHA256 sum and then the name of the ISO and press enter. Now this is going to take 10-15 seconds. So be patient. And this is the output that we get. 347 and we can see 347 6AO 6AO you can check that the entire string matches this this means you have the correct ISO once you have the ISO you need to burn it on a USB drive but before you do that it's a good idea to go and go to uh, Viper OS and check the prerequisites So it is advisable that you have 16 GB of RAM. Also, I have personally created and tested it on an APU, which means an integrated GPU using the Radeon processor. So if you have an external graphic card such as NVIDIA, you will have to configure it on your own. Also make sure that you have one terabyte of SSD space. It, you can actually work with less also, but it is advisable to use one terabyte SSD and all the scripts and configurations are tuned for 1080p. It will work with other configurations as well, but you have to manually change the utile configuration, which maybe I will show you how to do at a later stage. Now back to the installation. If you are on Windows or Mac, you can use this tool called Bellina Etcher in order to burn this ISO on a USB pen drive. Now I've not personally used this, but I've heard it's good. So you can download it and you can use it in order to burn your ISO. Optionally, if you're on Linux, you can also use DD. So you can issue the command sudo DD input file is equal to the location of your ISO and output file is going to be your drive. Now do make sure that you are burning to the correct drive because if you give the wrong path, you may overwrite some important data on your computer. So just double check using the lsblk that you are using the correct path and you can say status is equal to progress if you want you can set a block size also for example something like this bs is equal to 4m so it will transfer 4 megabytes of data in one go so anyhow this is the command once your pen drive is ready you can boot using that pen drive now Every computer is different, so you will have to check your computer's literature in order to learn how you can boot using an external USB drive. I am going to be demonstrating the installation process using VirtualBox, but pretend this is my computer. So once you have plugged in your USB drive and you know how to boot from it, start your computer. And you will be greeted with welcome to Viper OS screen. You can choose live system or live system AMD failsafe mode. Select the first option and press enter. Now this process can take a few seconds or even a few minutes. So be patient because this is a big ISO. A lot of things are getting uncompressed in memory. So it can take a few minutes. I'm going to pause and come back when some action happens. Now I was having some problem with a virtual machine. So I will demonstrate it on real hardware. This is a laptop. Once you log in, you should see something like this. In case you are not in the first workspace, which you should be, you can press mod one. Mod one will take you to the first workspace. As you can see over here, one should be highlighted. Next, you need to find the installer. In order to do that, press the mod key and then keep pressing the J key till you can see the installer. Now here it is complaining that it's not plugged to the power source. It is recommended that you plug it to the power source. Then you click next. 
select your time zone then click next if you want you can change the system language by clicking here and you can also set the numbers and locales by clicking over here next click on the next button here I am going to choose English US default you can choose something else if you want then click next now this is where you need to pay attention usually what I do is yeah you can simply say erase disk erase disk will delete all the current currently present uh, data on the selected storage so you can say erase disk and make sure you have selected the right drive which in my case is this one NVMe just make sure you are doing it to the right drive now in this laptop there are two hard disks so just be sure and I am going to choose erase disk and over here I am going to say encrypt system and we can set a password I am simply going to say 1 2 3 4 over here but of course when you are installing it in a real computer choose a strong password now for swap I am going to say swap in this case I have around I think 16 GB of RAM so I can choose swap with hibernate if I want and let the system be BTRFS this is important don't change it otherwise many of the scripts may not work so uh, we choose swap with hibernate and then BTRFS and just inspect everything looks okay then we click on the next button by the way if you have large amount of RAM such as 40 GB or 32 GB and you do not uh, have a lot of hard disk space you may actually just go with swap no hibernate in my case because I have 16 GB of RAM so it's okay I can choose swap with hibernate then you click next now here it is going to ask you to create a user I am simply going to say uh, let's say mankind and give a password again I'm going to say one two three four you can choose a strong password when you are installing it on a production machine then I'm going to say next review everything your location locale everything is correct your keyboard is set correctly your partitions are all set correctly and once you are happy you can click on the install button now the installation has started this is going to take some time maybe 15 20 minutes depending upon the speed of your computer so we just wait let me just cut the video and come back when this is finished the installation has now finished so it is asking you to restart the computer but what I tend to do is I simply say done and shut down the computer so in order to shut down the computer you can press Control, alt and delete and then you can click shut down the system has now shut down unplug the USB drive and restart the system now it is asking for the password in my case it was 1234 you can press enter you can select uh, Viper OS Anaconda the first option now the installation takes a little bit of a time but once everything is set up it's very fast now it's going to ask you for the password which is again in this case 1234 and press enter and now you are inside Viper OS so in this video we learned how we can install Viper OS Sorry about the phone recording and the poor video and audio quality. But in the next video, we are going to take a look at the common navigation paradigms inside Viper OS. How do you navigate workspaces? How do you launch applications, etc. So I will see you in the next video.